I'm Danny. I'm 28 years old and I'm a recovering drug addict alcoholic. At nine years old, I was playing football and I tore my ACL, my meniscus, and my MCL. And I had to wait five years until I was 14 to have a knee surgery. I had the surgery and probably in between 14 and 15, I got prescribed Vicodin and I started eating them like candy before school and it's just, I love the feeling. So at 14 I was experimenting, taking a little more than I should and then after that I hit high school and it started the party scene. So I would, I would drink, I would try any drug that was in front of me. I mean, I just wanted to be cool I guess. I wanted to fit in with all the other kids and it's a small town, there's not much to do so get messed up I guess, that's what, that's what the thing was. I started doing a lot of cocaine, um, couldn't sleep, I'd be up three, four nights at a time just snorting, snorting, snorting cocaine and they got to the point where my body was just, I didn't feel like a 17, 18 year old, I was so tired all the time and just depressed and I needed to feel better so I found, we obviously had drug connects from the cocaine. Um, they referred us to another drug connect for pain pills, which helped us to sleep and um, feel kind of normal. So I found that, and once I found the oxycodone, it was it was like the cocaine didn't matter. You know what I mean? I was just off and running, and it progressed from maybe taking three or four a night to finding the higher milligram pills, 30 milligram. Um, whatever, 15, and um, I just, I just like, I love the feeling, I mean, I, I can't really explain it, but um, I started spending all my money on it, um, my family didn't matter anymore, I wasn't spending any time with them, it was, it was drugs or nothing really. My parents had owned a restaurant and one of the cooks there actually was an older guy who had a prescription and I stole some of his pills. He, um, he then asked me, if you want some, just ask me. And then from, then from that moment on, he was like my first drug connect. He's just an old guy who had, um, I think, Crohn's or some type of disease and he wanted to make some extra money so he'd sell his pills. And um, from that point on, it was just, um, it was easy access. He knew people. It was like kind of a... Um, series of acquaintances that I'd meet. Like he'd say, oh you want this drug, you go to this guy. Most of my dealers at least were 40 or older. I mean, I'm not saying that's old, but that's uh, what it seems like. They are more trustworthy with the doctors so they can manipulate them better, I think is what it is. At 18, 19 years old, I was I didn't know it yet, but I was pretty much a full-blown um, pill addict. At this point, I hadn't found um, the needle yet or anything like that. Like I was just um, snorting them or popping them, probably a little of both. But and probably by this age, honestly, I tried pretty much every drug. Um, but as time went on, I just. Every, nothing else in my life mattered. I, I didn't care what clothes I had on my body, what um, vehicles I was driving, if I had a place to live. Honestly, I could care less as long as I was high. Mid-twenties, like, I would never have seen myself like I was. Like, I was bouncing from different apartments, um, state assistance, uh, main health care, main care, and I couldn't I just couldn't keep anything together. My, I would get evicted from apartments. I, I think I was in one for a month and a half and that was like the longest ever. At one point, no one would take me in. I was completely homeless. I slept on a mattress in a alleyway behind one of the apartments I was at that I found um, next to the dumpster. I don't know when the first time was. I was probably, I know I was living in Lewiston, Maine. I was probably 22 or 23, I 
couldn't get prescription pills anymore and they were I don't know what happened I think Maine cracked down on something and they made it harder for people to get prescriptions I don't know what the deal was but I couldn't get prescription pills so um, one of my buddies stopped over and he had heroin and we he said I have to shoot it if I want to do it so I shot up the um, heroin and that feeling I thought pain pills was a good feeling that feeling was ten times that like it was just instant rush and like I said I'm an um, adrenaline junkie so it was instant gratification and it was I was hooked there was no stopping me I was on a road to jail or death what happened that really scared the living shit out of me and made me want to get better for myself was the day I overdosed. Um, I went to, this is an example of how bad I held people hostage. I took my grandmother with me, told her I needed to go pay someone off in Portland. Um, so she drove me 45 minutes from Lewiston, my grandmother, 65 years old, all the way to um, Portland to a Burger King to meet up with a drug dealer. I got the drugs, walked into the Burger King bathroom, um, injected what I thought was heroin, ended up being fentanyl, and overdosed right there. My grandmother dragged me into her car and drove me to Main Med right here in Portland, and they Narcaned me a bunch of times, couldn't hit veins or wasn't enough Narcan, I don't know, but they had to put a needle through my shin bone to into my bone marrow to get me to, to revive me. And I woke up, I thought I had been in a car accident. I was hooked up to all this, these breathing things, tubes everywhere, my dad crying, my mom crying, my grandmother crying. And I didn't know what to think, I was just lost. And the first thing when I woke up I wanted to do was get out. I started ripping everything off, I'm like, get me out of here. And they had security standing outside the, um, the hospital bed or whatever. Um, so once I realized what happened, I kind of chilled out, laid down, and just, uh, this is what's really sick is I, as I'm laying there in the hospital bed, I have my shorts on or whatever, they had ripped my shirt off, but I had my shorts on and I felt my pockets and I still felt a needle in there and I'm like, oh, I still have dope on me. And so at that point I took the dope out and I hit it, I don't remember where exactly on me, the needle and um, I ended up leaving the hospital, walking outside, my dad was there, my mom and my parents are separated so um, they were talking which was kinda rare <laughs> and um, they were talking about getting me help and they were both distraught obviously because their son was just dead. But um, I gave them the last of my heroin from my pocket and I said, I'm done at that point. And my dad um, was pissed that I still had it on me, but he walked it into the hospital and gave it to the doctor. And I said, Dad, I'm ready to get help. My mom ended up finding me a place in Portland called Myrtle Street, Sober Living. And I did not want to go at all. I thought I could do it on my own, um, but I know that I tried it before and the only way to do it is to give up what you think is right and just really let God do it. I don't think I really know what would have stopped me from going down this path. It was, it's hard to say, but honestly if I would have taken the drugs at 14 prescribed that might have been okay but I don't even know what clicked in my head to take three not one I don't know what it was it, maybe it was the extremist in me but as far as as far as knowing what would have stopped me there I really don't know I've been sober now for two years or upcoming on two years uh, on June 16th as far as how life is for me now to stay sober it's it's very simple. I don't, I don't consider myself like a big book thumper or I'm not going to four meetings a week or anything like that, but I 
I just try to pray in the morning and be an honest human being. Do normal, everyday things that not anything a drug addict do, just not be a shady person, I guess. There's not one day anymore that I think about getting high. I'm just, I'm happy all the time. I, I enjoy going to work. I enjoy spending time with my girlfriend. I enjoy going golfing. Like, these little things that I used to do, even high, mean a lot more to me now because it's like, I can feel everything.